Yeah. Good morning to all. Uh, thank you for registering and attending today's talk regarding the Biotech Ignition Grant Scheme and to gain insights on writing a successful grant application. Venture Center, as a BIG partner, is happy to organize this awareness session for the 24th BIG call with our collaborating partners, VIT Vellore, SSN Tamil Nadu, ICT Mumbai, ICT NICE Mumbai, Ahmedabad University Venture Studio, EEWA Center, UIC Anna University Chennai, Manipal GOK Bio Incubator, BioNest. Welcome again to the No More series, Understanding Bayrax BIG Scheme. I'll just give a brief introduction of today's speakers. Uh, Dr. Shalini Singh, uh, she is a specialist for funding programs at Venture Center, and she'll be talking about understanding the big scheme. Uh, Dr. Shalini Singh holds PhD in chemistry from University of Pune. She has done her postdoctoral training from RMIT University, Melbourne. Her research of five plus ex years experience includes work on synthesis and characterization of second and sixth compound semiconductor nanomaterials, which has various applications in the field of optoelectronic devices, biolabeling, etc. She has been actively involved in the BIG program management to program promotion, creating awareness of science, entrepreneurship, managing and screening proposals, proposal due diligence, contract management, project monitoring, mentoring of grantees and stakeholder relationships. She is also involved in developing the funding database for Venture Center. Today's speaker, the second speaker is Dr. Smita Kali. She's an advisor for bioincubation at Venture Center. She'd be talk, uh, giving tips for writing a winning grant application. Dr. Smita Kali um, is leading the Center for Biopharma Analysis Facility and the Biorex Regional Bioinnovation Center at Venture Center. She's actively engaged in mentoring incubators. Um, uh, she looks after the infrastructure facilities, creation and development of the innovation ecosystem. Earlier, she worked as an assistant professor at Sihagat College of Pharmacy, uh, Pune. Smita is PhD in pharmaceutical chemistry from ICT Mumbai and has academic experience of 12 years which includes research experience of three plus years. With this, I would um, request Shalini to um, start her talk. So I also request other participants to type their uh, queries in the chat box as the talk goes along. Uh, we can take questions after okay. Shalini's um, section uh, if you have specific to BIG, after which we would request Smita to um, start her talk. And again, then we can have a QA and a after that. Over to you, Shalini. Yeah, thank you, Pallavi, for the introduction and thank you to all the collaborating partner for this talk. And I welcome all the uh, participants today. Yes, uh, I hope my screen is visible to all. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, today we'll be uh, covering BIG. First, we'll understand the uh, what is the scheme is for and then we'll go in deep into how the grant writing has to be done some tips and pointer on that so moving ahead uh the call is currently open and it will be open till 31st may till uh, evening 5 30 pm so request all to you know stick to the deadline or if possible try and uh, submit your application three four days prior because there is a lot of uh, glitches technical glitches in the portal which we you may experience so request to all of you to submit the application by at least 28 May. Yeah, so under ministry, uh, just put this here. Yeah, Ministry of Science and Technology uh, comes the Department of Biotechnology and uh, Department of Biotechnology has come with a non-for-profit company which was established in March 2012 uh, under Section 8 that we all know as uh, Biotechnology Industry Research Assistant Council, that is BIRAC. Now, BIRAC has various funding schemes for different stages. Uh, one such scheme today we will be seeing is Biotechnology Ignition Grant. So what was the purpose of this grant? So BIG gives you 50 lakhs for 18 months and it is for uh, startups as well as individuals. So basically, if you have any idea which you want to take it to proof of concept or you want to validate or upscale this or you want to uh, uh, stimulate the enterprise formation and you have some ideas which has some commercialization potential, uh, then this scheme is applicable. So the scope or the highlights of the scheme is that um, it is grant in eight 
the royalty and tech transfer clauses have been recently added that is from call 16 you get to have mentoring advisory referral support from the big partners you're choosing also you benefit from the learnings and the events and the visibility you get from the events which are organized time to time by barack as well as by the big partners also uh, you get an uh, opportunity to um, get your ideas evaluated by the pool of experts who are going to review your proposal. So they will give you insights on the um, proposal you're submitting, whether uh, it is going in a right direction or not, or what is the short method or what method you can uh, use to come into market as early as possible. So these are some of the highlights of the scheme. So coming to the scope, so if you have any technology objectives, you have an idea which has a commercialization potential, it has novelty, uh, you want to de-risk the technology or you want to validate your proof of concept, then this is all supported under the big scheme. Whereas if you want to just fund your PhD or the idea is very academic in nature or it is involving lot many clinical trials, or it is not having any commercialization potential, then that is not supported under BIG. So these are the broad domains uh, under which you can apply for this scheme, that is healthcare, industrial, biotech, agriculture, others include bio, uh, bio IT interface, analytical methods, bioinformatics. Now these are further divided into theme and sub-theme categories. So uh, healthcare is divided into diagnostic drugs, um, medical devices, uh, then under that diagnostic is again further divided to the sub themes like human, animals, plants. Similarly, agriculture has biofertilizer, secondary agriculture, fisheries, etc. Then industrial biotech has bioenergy, biofuels, waste management. Now these theme and sub themes are really very important when you're filling your applications because based on your theme and sub themes, you, uh, your proposal is assigned to the experts. So if you choose your correct theme and your sub theme, it goes to the right expert who can evaluate your proposal properly, you know, uh, give their opinion to that and guide you. But whereas if there is any uh, wrong theme or sub theme chosen, then immediately it goes to a wrong expert and then it might affect your scores. So if you're having any difficulty in, you know, finding what theme or sub theme category it is falling, then please do connect with us. We'll help you to choose the right theme and sub theme. So now for this, especially for this call, uh, um, the BIG has come up with this co-funding opportunity, which is only for startups and who are working in the areas of infectious diseases or digital health. So in that also, these are the supported areas like tuberculosis, uh, vector bone diseases or diseases uh, with surveillance uh, and antimicrobial resistance, climate health. So anything covering in this can be um, uh, can be categorized into co-funding opportunity, which is funded by BARAC and by India Health Fund. So uh, you will be getting fundings 50 lakhs from BIG. Anything above that will be in coming into the co-funding category. So this is the process flow uh, where you know uh, the call opens twice a year. Once the call closes, uh, your proposal goes into the eligibility round. And uh, after the legal eligibility, there is a technical eligibility conducted by the partner. After once you qualify that, uh, your proposal is assigned to online reviewer. So five reviewers are assigned to your proposal and they will score you. BIRAC will decide the cutoff. And if you fall above the cutoff, you move on to the next stage. That is the technical evaluation panel. Here you get the chance to meet the expert face to face. You will present your idea in front of the committee and they will score you. Again, BIRAC will take the final decision. What is the cutoff and how many proposals they want to fund. So once you get the grant, a due diligence is conducted by the partner, followed by agreement signing and release of first tranche. So this whole process typically takes around five to six months time. Once you get the grant um, from there, it takes two months of time for the release of the funds. So if coming to the eligibility, uh, if you already have a startup and you're planning to apply with startup, then make sure that minimum 51% of the capital is owned by the resident Indian citizen. Uh, the company should be under five years old. You have to identify a, a project leader from 
uh, your team and who will be responsible for all the managerial aspects and the technical aspect of the projects. He should have completed his basic graduation, which could be in any discipline, and he should be a shareholder in the company. So for company, it is not mandatory to get incubated. Uh, you can have your own R&D space. Coming to individuals, uh, you have to be an Indian citizen. For individual, it is mandatory that you are incubated and you have completed your basic graduation, which could be in any discipline. And project leaders which are coming out of non-for-profit should have their organizational policies for faculty spin-off. So now when I was telling the process flow, flow I was telling you that the um, experts will score you. So what are those evaluation criteria? So unmet need or the novelty carries uh, 20 marks. So you have to show that you have a difference from the existing solution. Then what is your business plan or commercialization potential, which will carry 15 marks? What is your value proposition carries 20 marks? Technical viability carries the maximum marks, that is 30 marks and teams carries 15 marks. Apart from this, some marks are also allocated if you have some challenges in your project, which could be related to regulatory IP. So what strategy you are using to overcome those challenges and also overall your planning of the project for that 18 months and for the amount you have asked. So this is the evaluation. So overall on 100, they will score you. So this is the success rate table. If you see, we have been partnered from call four and the number of applications have been increasing since then. Uh, so till 23, call 23, we have uh, BIG uh, application received to a thousand plus. And, but if you see the in principle approval uh, gotten for Venture Center, or if you compare even the application received by Venture Center, uh, is, ve is very less compared to the number of applications. So you can see how competitive this uh, scheme is. And I think the next session will be really helpful for you, you know, to uh, write the proposal and, you know, qualify it for further rounds. So coming to the uh, impact of uh, big partner, Venture Center, uh, we have received 1,000 plus applications. We have done more than 200 talks and we have mentored 800 plus applicants till now. Uh, so total 132 projects have been supported out of which 127 have formed as startups from which 35 are women founders. And these startups have created 800 and plus employment. And also they have raised 300 plus follow on funding where 200 plus are IP filed and 100 plus products have been launched. So let me cover quickly two success stories. So one of the applicants, um, Vaishali Kulkarni, had applied as an individual. Uh, she was uh, on her PhD, uh, on the verge of completing the PhD when she applied for BIG. Then she formed the company. Once she got the grant, she converted into company, that is KB Calls. And uh, she had an idea of making this non-GMO uh, natural biopigments, uh, after which... Uh, after a BIG journey, if we see her path, she has raised various further fundings from Chirate Ventures, Exilar Ventures. Now they have their own manufacturing facility also of 2,000 square feet. And last year, their color palettes were also showcased at LACME Fashion Week. Similarly, uh, uh, Renuka Devan, uh, she also had applied as an individual and later on she converted into company that is Bioprime Agri Solutions. Uh, she was, uh, she had proposed the idea of discovering these molecules and microbes that help crop uh, make climate resilient. And now uh, she has raised, if you see her um, uh, article was there on the social media where she raised um, nine crore free series A round from Inflexor Ventures. Also, she was invited in the conference hold, uh, held by Viva Tech Paris. And some of the uh, visibility which our grantees have got on Shark Tank is one is Pad Care Labs, which all of you must have uh, seen the episode. It was very interesting one where uh, he was offered a blank check uh, by the shark. Then there, there for this current uh, season, we had Pragmatic and Silly Farm Technologies pitching and also uh, getting the uh, funding from this shark. And these are some other glimpses of the products of our grantees at a different theme which have been launched into the market. 
And this is our core team where I and Pallavi and Siddhi take care of the BIG application and contract. Mentoring is taken care by Dr. Premnath and Dr. Smita. Project uh, financial management is taken care by Dr. Manisha and Shruti. And uh, they, the, these are some of the upcoming talks we are having. Uh, one is on 7th May. So if anybody is interested, can register and attend this. Also, we are conducting a three-day workshop uh, from 9th to 11th May, which is in person at Venture Center, where we will be doing a workshop on grant writing. So there will be a complete handholding for three days. So anybody interested, kindly register for that. I thank you all. And if you have any queries regarding eligibility or you choosing your theme, sub theme or for grant uh, writing the application, you can please feel free to connect with us. Uh, thank you once again. Yeah, thank you, Shalini. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, I encourage you to uh, either type in the chat box or raise the hands. So I can see that Rahul has raised. So you can ask a question, Rahul. So uh, Shalini, I just wanted to confirm that uh, the second slide, we had showed that uh, product service or any software part are not yeah. eligible for uh, Bayrek. Is it true? So what is there in the digital? So at a, at a one side, we, there is a sentence that IoT and AI ML is encouraged to apply. On that eligibility, it is mentioned that software and service product is not eligible. So that is a bit confusing. Would you go through that slide so I can? I, I will just share my screen again. Second slide, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So next, next. This one. So here, uh, not supported. The third point, no plan for tech product or service. Yeah. So if do, you don't have any commercialization potential, or you don't have any product which is going to come out into the market or any service. No. So, so, so let's say, for example, there is a product that is a SaaS based software which has mm -hmm. a commercialized potential. We already raised some, you know, we already into, let's say, for example, in pre revenue. But how, so how to, you know, define this line that no plan for tech, product, or service? So by so that, this this line I uh, we had we meant by that you should have some technology which is going to come which has some commercialization of a potential or there has to be a product which will have some commercialization or not product or not technology but some service if you are offering should have that. So okay. uh, yeah, the uh, so if you see my next slide, bio IT interface, bioinformatics, analytical methods, or you know this data analytics, AI, ML, IoT, automation is all supported falling into these categories. So anything okay. which can be clubbed with this agriculture, you are using AI and you're showing that, uh, uh, you know, uh, application or you're clubbing IoT, say with a diagnostic and showing that application is supported. But it has to be diagnostic drug or medicines. It should not be through the marketing, right? Yes, you have to show some application in this domains. Okay. Whether diagnostic drugs, devices, or in agriculture or industrial biotech. Right. Yeah. Any other questions? You can raise hand or you can unmute and ask or you can put it in the chat box. Can you use this work as for the PhD student? PhD will not be funded. So uh, if they have, you know, on the verge of completing their PhD and whatever the work they have put into the thesis, now they want to take it ahead to the market, then they can apply. But their PhD will not be funded. So the work which will carried out when we are mentor as a professor in the university, when I applied this uh, by taking NOC from university and uh, will mentor a student, when you take the uh, manpower like uh, students, we will be able to do their research work uh, for their PhD program. If I take them to work on that, if they uh, have the chance to submit their PhD thesis. But this will not go into their thesis work. But there so is that 
to provide that fellowship is, for a student who can gain no, or no we cannot provide fellowship to a phd student so that is what i am saying it is not supported any exploratory research or phd students research is not supported okay okay yeah so it is of something applied nature which should not be a basic one to explore something yes, yes. something the, which yeah, yeah something which has commercialization potential uh, you know you you have done your work now you want to take it ahead further you can apply for this okay we have the already we have any product in your hand you have to experiment with that with the with your own vision and also with your idea only yes, that yes. will support that to yes. take the next level yes yes okay understood thank you i have a question that we have uh, we are a startup and we are a registered company in rajasthan and okay. we have come up with a vision screening device and a cataract screening device and we have also applied for ip filings okay. uh, nationally uh, we are incorporating ai ml into that system because it connects to an mm. app which is on the mobile so how uh, how much are our chances of getting the grant right now or after uh, putting ai ml should we wait or should because we need money to develop the ai ml yeah, so i think you can apply for this call you can put that work as part of your milestones or that 18 months work plan that this is what you're going to do and right. till now you have already done this preliminary studies this is the yes, proof yes. for that and now you're moving ahead by adding ai ml to that Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you can okay. apply for this call. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, should the company be registered? Uh... So it is for both individuals as well as for startups. So if you have already registered a company, then you have to apply as a startup. But if you have not formed a company, you can apply as an individual. And another one question. So how much of the preliminary data should be there for the applying to this company uh, for this uh, grant so it is uh, basically for idea to proof of concept okay, so okay. but some preliminary data is expected that is what we are seeing that expert do have some uh, they see require some data so if you support that it just add to your uh, you know weightage of your work that you have done and carried out some work and that is giving a confidence to everybody that this yes this is going to work or this is the data which is you know have showing some successful studies oh. thank you otherwise if you have some literature also supporting that that is also mm -hmm. fine okay yes uh, the application process asks for a trl level so is it necessary that uh, your trl level should be above 2 or 3 for to be considered Yes, actually, it should not be above two, but at least TRL one you can start with, and less than TRL four. Uh, ah, uh, it should be less than TRL four for sure. But TRL yes, two, yes. two or three is the uh, uh, TRL two is perfectly three is accepted. not. Yeah, two is accepted because you can upscale or validate your proof of concept. Or if you don't have that, you want to establish proof of concept from right from idea stage, then you will definitely have TRL one. okay and uh, is it expected that you reach a minimum 3 or 4 by the time it is 2 years that you are showing your project it is like you can have it will depend on the uh, you know the work you have done so if you have already uh, developed your prototype now alpha prototype and now you are applying for big definitely you will go about 3 or say 4 Uh, yes. you'll by four, but now if you're starting from very you know uh, basic idea where you just have literature with you, by the time eighteen months are done, maybe you'll reach TRL three only or maybe two. So that yeah. depends, yes, depends on. But the th that is acceptable, right? Yes. Because yes, yes. okay, so if we my my worry is I have applied once and uh they uh. or we thought we kind of uh, estimated we thought we would need more than the 18 months so in 18 months we would not reach a trl 5 so we got very good comments but uh, now when we are applying the second time we want to make sure we apply for the funding with a more uh, you know kind of comprehensive realistic feeling 
we had estimated we would reach TRL 5 by 18 months. But I think we'll probably get to TRL 4. We are at uh, TRL 2-3. That, see, so as TRL long as we state it properly, we should be okay, right? Yeah. Yes, see, TRL 3, up, if reaching TRL 3 is what is expected because above TRL 3, you have SIBRI grants. So definitely right. TRL 4 and 5 are all going to uh -huh. fall in that category and then you have to apply for those grants. So okay. here, you, if you reach, make it till TRL 3, that is more than enough. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, I want to know, uh, we are from my Manipal actually as a faculty, uh, so we want to apply, uh, so what will be the role of a, a Venture Center actually? So Venture Center is the uh, implementation partner, it is the big partner, so once you uh, apply choosing Venture Center, we will be, uh, you know, doing your uh, screening, uh, eligibility screening, we will be communicating you all the comments which you will be getting for the rounds, we will be mentoring you for the rounds. Once you get the grant, we will be doing the due diligence hand holding of your project, releasing your funds and monitoring your project till 18 months. Okay, so so you have to, we, we have to apply through you or you have to uh, choose as a your center like that? Uh, so uh, when, you go, when you go to the por portal, it's an online uh, submission. There, One question is there, a uh, big partner. So you uh -huh, can yeah. select venture center there. Okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. In that way to go. Okay. Yes, for that uh, you don't need anything from Venture Center. You can just select Venture Center. Okay. Uh, is there any PhD research is going on for that uh, pro uh, product? Uh, so it's, is it eligible for the BIREC grant also? So as I mentioned uh, earlier also that if you are doing your PhD, like in one of the case studies I showed you, the student was about to complete. That part is not going into that thesis. Okay, mm -hmm. now whatever is there uh, after that, which has to come to the market, that you can propose under big. Okay, that that part should not be from the uh, from yes. the thesis. Yes, it so should, should not be a part of not, thesis. We will not give them their PhD fellowship. Okay. That PhD research will not be, but anything which is after that, or you know, uh, which is not going into the thesis, but they want to propose as a separate uh, grant scheme for which they have some commercialization potential can be applied for big. So you mean to say at the, at the, like now when the thesis is getting over and then the product will be get converted that time to go? Yes, big, yes. Big that is the best time because... That is the best time. Okay. Yeah, because they're asking your commitment also for this project. So you can show that you have completed your PhD and now you are fully going to commit to this project for 18 months. Okay, okay. Uh, madam, uh, we are a agri startup. Yes. Uh, we are registered as a DAPP startup into the agriculture sector, and we are a partnership uh, firm. Uh, and okay, we LLP. design and manufacture. We are a partnership firm. Okay. Not LLP partnership. Okay. Okay. Uh, we design and manufacture uh, agri equipments uh, for using uh, for sustainable agriculture. So, uh, we are uh, eligible to apply for this? So, see, uh, for BIG, either individuals, private limited, or LLP can apply. So, you would have to go okay. by that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so while, yeah. While, while applying, we can apply as partnership. And once we are selected, we can move with, uh, we can change it to private limited. No, no, no. You would have to apply as a uh, private limited or LLP or OPC. So I just want to suggest that there are a lot of questions. They will get answered in Smita's talk also. So yeah. uh, we can uh, continue answering them on the chat uh, and uh, you can ask, ask their questions after Smita's talk also. But let's get started because that talk will also answer uh, quite a few questions here. Okay. So Smita, uh, over to you. Can you get yeah. started? Yeah. Can you all see the screen? Yes, well, yes. yes ma'am, we can yes. see the screen. Yeah, sure. We are able Good to afternoon, see. everyone. So yes, uh, I'll be telling afternoon. you more about, uh, you know, explaining you the grant proposal template and how to, what best practices should be followed to make it successful. So I saw some questions people are asking that, uh, what are the chances that we will make it? So it all depends on how well written, well thought uh, the proposal is and yeah, 
how the idea is, how good it is and what big problem it is solving. So let's understand how to put together this proposal document. So when we say a proposal document, we are trying to prepare a proposal to seek funds, to support manpower, uh, to pay the rents for infra, to buy some equipment or to outsource some of the services. And before putting this document together for all this ask, we must read the scheme document very carefully. So whatever was discussed uh, just before me by Shalini, that what is the eligibility criteria? What are the different domains which are supported? Uh, you know, what is the scope? What is supported? What is not supported? All that should be well understood so that you are sure that whatever you are putting in your application is what is being asked by the funding agency. So there has to be a synergy between what is being asked by funding agency, what they're looking for and what you're proposing for the funds to get realized. So while we are preparing this document, uh, we need to keep this in mind that this is not a research project which we are writing. It is a project which would have some commercialization potential. So we have to prepare it as if we are preparing a marketing document. So we are trying to sell our dream. We are trying to tell people that this is what we visualize to make and how helpful this will be. So while preparing that, we would have some scientific data, but then we also need to talk about the final outcome. Like what will be the final product which will result from this research? Or what will be the final technology or process or service? So while preparing the proposal document, please keep it in the mind that it should not appear like a research proposal, but it should also have a business angle to it that this will get commercialized and how. Okay, so let's look at what are the funding agency or investors key questions. So they would like to know what you want to achieve. What is your goal? Are you passionate enough? And how would that passion come across that would come across through your proposal, which you're preparing? So how well written it is, how reviewer friendly the proposal is. So what are your goals and do your goals match with what I am thinking to support. So what is my budget? So right now there was a question that, you know, uh, if we realistically calculate, we might only reach TRL 4 and not TRL 5. So that's fine. We have to propose whatever can be actually achieved in those 18 months and with that budget. So they will also look for that whatever you're proposing, does that fits my budget? Then only that can be supported. Then if you have defined certain objectives goal, do you know how to do it? What is your work plan? Is it scientifically correct, feasible, and looks realistic, achievable in that timeline? Why you? How are you credible? So do you have the right academic background? Do you have that experience, earlier track record, publications, uh, experience in that field? So all that is what they will look for. And finally, if there is resonance. So have you anticipated my question? So as I said, read the funding guidelines carefully. Understand the funding agency, what they're looking for. Look at the proposals which they have supported earlier. Okay, talk to earlier grantees. Look at the successful stories. So then you will be able to anticipate that what could be the questions and do you have those answers built in in your proposal is what we want you to do. So there was one question about what is TRL level, technology readiness level. So here, uh, this is as per the NASA definition. So technology readiness level. So once we have an idea, okay, and if it is only at an idea stage, that is a TRL one. Once we start working on that idea and start doing some experimental work, then we say that, you know, we have progressed further, say TRL two, once we have proved our idea so we have a proof of concept in hand so that can be a trl2 further we need to validate the proof of concept that are we getting the reproducibility accuracy every time if it is same results are consistent so then we move ahead in the trl level to trl3 then we might make the prototype validate it 
uh, first it will be within our lab, then between labs, then we might do a third party validation. So as we keep on doing more experiments in the correct sequence as required, we progress in the TRL levels. And finally, once we are about to reach the market, that's you know higher TRL levels. So BIG is supporting TRL one to three. So if you are at one, you might say that we might reach three. If you are at two, you might say we might reach four or five, depending upon what activities will be carried out in 18 months to reach to that TRL level. So that was some basic information about what the funding agency is looking for, what are TRL levels. Now let's look at the proposal details which you need to cover in that online proposal. So first, before uh, here on the left hand side, you can see that these are the different questions which will be there in the online application or the different sections and you will have to address each one of them, add a description there for each one of them. So while doing that, the first thing is you will prepare a summary. So they, there'll be a title and then there'll be a summary. I'll come to the title in the next slide. So in the summary, the abstract of your proposal, try to include one one statement from each of these that what are you planning to do? How it is useful? How it is different, novel, competitive? What is the opportunity there? How you wish to do it? what work you have already done and what you plan to do, what is the scope during BIG, what will be the final product. And uh, you know, if you have already filed a patent, you might say that this is a patented technology to make something or you know, that way so that people know that it is already patented. So try to include some glimpses from all of these into your summary. So make it very interesting for the reviewer so the title and summary has to be very convincing and interesting for them to go through the rest of the proposal. That's very important. Now there is one uh, concept note document, which there will be a tab that upload concept note after summary in the online application. So what is this concept note? Here you see that all these sections, uh, here there will be only a, a tab where you will have to type. So there is no scope to add any figures, diagrams, flowcharts, which can explain your technology better. So then you can take advantage of, uh, may I request uh, Mr. Deepak Kumar? I think, uh, you know, I can see your name and there are some lines which are appearing on the screen. Can you please stop doing that? Yeah. So in the concept note, uh, it's a word document which you can prepare, which can have a summary of the technology you're trying to develop and any preliminary work which you have done and you have the results in form of some images, figures, graphs, diagrams, all that can be part of this concept note and that can be uploaded, okay? So here you have the freedom to include all these pictorial representations which you cannot cope in this online application. Next, you will have objectives and proposed approach section. So here you need to clearly say what are the objectives. So when you're defining objectives, try to make them smart. So smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So try to be as specific, try to use quantitative terms, something which can be measured in time, which looks realistic and attainable within those timelines which you are proposing. So that's why you need to have a scope. You cannot complete from TRL 1 to TRL 8 only in those 18 months, not possible. So you have to scope out that this is my bigger project. And for this big project, in 18 months with the BIG grant, I can complete, say, from experiment number 10 to 18 only can be completed with BIG. The rest of it can be supported through other grants or other means. Okay. Then how will you analyze data? How will you collect data? What will be the different sample sizes, methods? All that should be part of the approach. So let's talk about the title now. So title is the first thing people are going to read in your proposal. And title also helps uh, us, the BIG partners or the BIRAC team to route it to the right reviewer for further review. So make sure your title reflects the domain correctly. Uh, so whether it's a diagnostic device, agri-tech device or a drug or a process for maybe, you know, uh, some uh, biotechnology application, 
So the title should reflect the domain. It should be crisp, clear, and short. It cannot be a four or five lines uh, title. So your title should reflect what are you making, for whom, okay, and how will they benefit. If you can cover that, say in two lines also, that's enough. The domain should be clearly, uh, one should be able to clearly say that, okay, this falls under, say, uh, devices. It's a device what they're trying to make. Then you will have applicant, if it is an individual, the individual's name, if it's a company, then company's name, and uh, where you wish to do it, and your BIG partner. So next, you will uh, explain why you want to do it, the rationale behind it, what problem you are solving. So when you're explaining the problem, again, try to be very specific there. So for example, if we are here, the example is stated here. Suppose if we were developing a point of care diagnostic device for diabetes to measure the glucose, then in that case, if I have to explain the problem and the opportunity, I will not start from explaining what is diabetes, how is its prevalence, or you know there is type 1, there is type 2, and uh, there is this, this, this diagnostic. That is not specific, that is very general. We are not writing any thesis here. So what I will directly do is I will talk about how diabetes is being diagnosed currently. What are the conventional methods? What are the tools available? And what are the problems still existing with the diagnosis of diabetes, where I see an opportunity. So what are the shortcomings with the current solutions, where you are seeing an opportunity, and because of which you plan to solve it with either your technology or process or product or service. So what is your proposed solution? You have to clearly state what is the outcome, whether it will be a product, process, a technology, or a service, it could be a combination of uh, product and service also. You might make a product along with which you will provide a service to them. Okay. So while explaining the product for the first time, please make it simple for the reviewer to understand what you are making. So here, if I'm talking about point of care diagnostic device for diabetes, if I include this image, then it makes easier for the person to understand that this is a device which I am making. I propose to make, I might not have made it, but I can visualize and add an image from internet also. Maybe I'll add a uh, star mark there and say that the image is representative and taken from internet. Or I can draw a diagram and show, okay, if it is not ready. Then it is clear that here there is a lancet. You prick your finger, place the blood drop on the strip, strip goes inside and I see the glucose value. So this helps me understand how the product is meant to be used. Then for using this product, I can buy the product one time, but I might need the strips every day. So that's a recurring cost and this is a one-time cost. Then I can list some of the key value features of my product that this is point of care. I might state its accuracy if I know or if I know that what accuracy levels I want to reach estimated values. Okay, how specific it will be within what time it can detect if it is able to cover the clinical range, how it is specific. So these will be the general terms like we have in any of our marketing documents for any of the products. The science behind this will come in the next slide where you will explain what is the technology behind your proposed solution, the underlying technology. So taking the same example, what is the biomarker which we are using to detect that glucose level? What is the sensor inside that product? The electronics part, okay? That all I might explain in this slide. Next comes novelty. So the highest weightage in BIG is for team and novelty. So novelty will come from two things. One is your IP. If you have filed any IP patents or you wish to and what will be the patentable features. So you have to clearly state the patentable features in the novelty section and not write it in general terms like saying that it will be cost effective, rapid, point of care, user friendly. All these words can come here 
when you are explaining the product okay but not in the novelty section in novelty section you will have to talk in little technical terms that what say if there is a sensor and that is something which is never been used for this kind of a product then that could be a patentable feature so try to use the technical patentable features the claims of your patent that will be there and how do you differentiate it so that differentiation can be brought out by having a competitive landscape table like this so anything you are making there will be someone who has already done it maybe little differently so those are your competitors the some some of the products which are uh, under development or which are already commercialized so try to identify them then make this table where you will identify some of the parameters or features against which you want to compare your technology with the market players and these features also need to be the features uh, because of which the customer will be willing to pay for your product okay the features which they want in your product so it could be the technology it could be the ease to use whether it is point of care or not the time taken by the device its selling price its specificity its accuracy um, you know uh, maybe uh, it, it depends on the technology you are developing it could be with related to the shelf life it uh, could be related to you know uh, how sensitive it is or all those could be the features depending upon your own technology you need to decide the right parameters and then compare and while you are doing that comparison just don't use the words yes no less uh, more fast slow if you have some quantitative numbers available or even semi quantitative say two times better 1.5 times better okay at least those so here if you see the example in time we are saying the device which we are developing can measure in 30 minutes uh, in comparison to the competitors where maybe they are taking 2 hours 8 hours 6 hours so wherever we are better than the competitor we are highlighting ourselves in green color and the competitor is shown here in red color so this kind of a comprehensive table so what we are trying to do is we are trying to summarize the information uh, in a tabular form so trying to present it in a better way so presentation always matters even if you have a very very what you say disruptive technology but you have not presented it well you might lose it so try to work on the presentation part also making it easier for the reviewer okay next what is the opportunity so the opportunity would be a maybe for the society there will be a great societal impact with the product or service you are making or there could be an economic impact also for the country so try to explain that now again when you are explaining this everywhere even when you are trying to explain your problem try to use references numbers statistics okay so uh, for example in case of the problem statement if you are uh, maybe refer nih uh who icmr aims so if they have stated some numbers there or if it is in newspapers try to quote those numbers statistical data same way here also to explain the impact very important section in the application is they will ask you are there any risk factors or challenges associated with the project or any barriers so yes for any technology when we start with the development we might Uh, have to do this homework that what could be the challenges which i foresee which might come across and do we have the right kind of mitigation plan for it so those risk factors could be related to environment health hazards or scalability or availability of some of the key components for which we might be uh, dependent on import uh, you know so these could be different risk factors it could be related to regulatory so if you have identified them early in your technology development then you have time to think of what could be the mitigation uh, strategy talk to people and find out so you have to list few of the challenges which you anticipate and then how are you ready to take care of those and solve them uh, this is very important section of preliminary work so i have a next slide uh, dedicated on that we'll explain that 
So finally, what will be the end outcome of your BIG project, even if you are at an idea stage? Do you have a clarity that TRL 8, when you're going to reach, whether it will be a product you will be making, a service which you will offer, a technology which you will uh, be ready with to license it out, or it can be a process also. So now talking about the preliminary work. So preliminary work done is a very important section of your application that where you are currently, what is your current status? Have you done some work earlier? If you have done, please add that data because that helps the reviewer build that confidence that they know how to do it. It is doable, technically, scientifically possible. A person has done it, published it also maybe if you have the research papers in that area. So they know how to do it. And then if you have done, then at what TRL you are right now, if you have a prototype ready, suppose, or some proof of concept. So you, you might say we are at TRL too. Then what is the scope of BIG project? What all will be completed? And what is your expected TRL? So here, while you are writing these two TRLs, please be very, very realistic. If you write that expected TRL is say 7, 8 and you are at TRL 4, then this is not the right grant for you. Then they would say that then apply for SIBRI or BIPP, which are little late stage grant by BIRAD. So make sure that you are at the right TRL and whatever is really possible in 18 months is your scope of project to reach that end goal to achieve those features in your technology or product and the expected TRL. Okay, so please, please include the data of the preliminary work done by you in the concept note and summarize it in this section of current status of preliminary work in the online application. Next is they will ask you what is the future plan of commercialization? What is the strategy? So for that, uh, in the BIG uh, template, which we have uh, our own template to help and mentor uh, the BIG applicants. So we have this slide called as commercialization strategy. So here, this is the timeline slide where you indicate that by the end of BIG, where you will be in your technology development. So for example, taking the same case, if I say that I would have made a validated prototype, I would have made a prototype and validated it with help of BIG. So after BIG, I might need to do some more trials, extended validation, clinical validation, field trials. Then I might go for regulatory approvals. After getting the approvals, set up the licensing, uh, get the licenses, set up the manufacturing unit, do the marketing, and finally reach the market. Okay. So how long each step will take duration? So suppose here I am now at April 2024. Then to reach the next step, say 18 months, I will calculate. So I might say, say December 2025, I might reach here. Say, uh, then uh, say April or May 2026, I might be doing this or got this. Say December 2026, this might be ready and the product might be there in the market, say Jan 2027. So whatever are the realistic timelines, I will try to mention here. And then I might also like to mention that how would I raise the further money might be through BIRAC only, through SIBRI, BIPP, or through angel investors, other private equity investors, or seed funding from incubators. So I might like to mention all those also. So that was about the future plan of commercialization. Very important part of the application is what will be your business model and go-to-market strategy. Because here we are talking about technologies which will have some commercialization potential and which will finally see the market as a product, service or technology. So we need to explain this and spend some time describing this carefully. So to start with business model, one needs to first understand what are we going to offer the customer. That is what will be my final offering product or product plus service or technology and to whom who will be my end consumer and customer sometimes your customer and end consumer could be different people so the customer might be a hospital buying it for a patient okay so understand that carefully once you have understood that 
then how will you target or approach them how will you go and tell them that this is something you have developed and they should test it and why so that is your go to market strategy and go to market will also involve your regulatory pathway and while uh, doing that maybe you will associate if it is a clinical product you might associate with uh, some of the hospitals which will be your early uh, customers and that's how or you might participate in conferences uh, exhibit and uh, showcase your products or talk to key opinion leaders from that field and that's how you can showcase so you need to have that plan how will you approach them that's your go to market also look at some of the success stories of startups in the similar domain from india or internationally how did they start what were their different milestones how did they raise is there an investor interest are they investing in these kind of domains so prepare a simple flow chart with all these things right so there could be one with the scientific experiments which have to be done and there could be one team member which takes care of you know uh, the market strategy the market research and doing all that so we talked about this plan of a commercialization the commercialization strategy uh so when you are talking about the novelty you might also talk about uh, if you have already filed a patent then please add that patent number and the details there if not then have you done a prior art search to check whether you have freedom to operate or what is if uh, you know what is already patented by people for that particular domain or in that area of research and where you have freedom to operate where you can actually work and then patent it yourself so there shouldn't be any patent infringement problems after you have actually carried out the work okay so try to make sure before carrying out the work that you know uh, whatever you are proposing and you feel that you will be able to patent can be patented and no one else has already worked on it so you might have to look at uh, patents uh in the similar area or domain where people have filed and mention their patent numbers and details uh if there are any overlapping patents which can restrict your freedom to operate all that information also will be asked in the online application so uh we have talked about what is the current status and then what is the scope of big project so based on that scope we will decide the different objectives and three major milestones for each six months so first six months what we will do next six months and finally in 18 months what all will be done so suppose the same example of point of care diabetes diagnostic i might say that in first six months my m1 main objective is to design the prototype so if i have to design the prototype between these two columns here i am saying demonstrate these indicators for this milestone so to demonstrate these indicators between these two columns i should have one more column saying what will be the different tasks or activities or experiments which will be carried out so if i had said that equipment purchase will be done then my indicator to demonstrate that i have done that will be that equipment purchase is completed so all the relevant document the picture of that equipment installed in my facility is what i will include in my report for the first milestone then if i say we will go ahead with procurement then whom we have hired for what with what uh, skills all that will be part of it so carefully write your m1 m2 m3 m3 if you see here we have also defined how many units we will make and the clinical evaluation to be carried out at how many centers so this helps me calculate my budget that if i have to make 20 units then uh pallavi can you please check someone is not on mute yeah so uh, if we can you then calculate that how much consumables or components will be required to make the 20 units so that should be part of our budget and to do the clinical evaluation if i have a quote a quotation from the three centers then that can be built in my budget in my application so for all those who are working on diagnostic devices please don't use the word clinical trials clinical trials is more relevant to uh, drug discovery drug development 
and it takes a long time and requires more budget okay so that is not supported by big so you can use the words clinical evaluation or clinical validation okay so grant and deliverable so we always should have a target product profile which we want to achieve for our product okay so in the same example if i am making this device my end deliverable which i have in mind and how do i decide that is based on market acceptability what is there in the market and what is acceptable by regulatory or by customer so they would expect something which is able to detect blood glucose in 2 minutes with a limit of detection of say uh, some milligram per ml sensitivity of 95% and specificity of 98% so once i have defined this in beginning that what will be my acceptance criteria unless i reach that value i might still keep on doing my experiments and refine them so that i get a product of the right quality which will be accepted in the market uh so this is a 50 lakhs grant and uh, you will get the first tranche disbursement uh that is 30% and then the rest of it 30% 30% after you complete your milestone so the big partner will set up a review meeting with experts and they will review whether whatever dem indicators you had listed here do you have the relevant proofs for them evidence for them and you will have to present that and on satisfactory uh, you know review this amount will be then released so these are the different budget heads so kindly stick to the same budget heads and also to the numbers which are uh, proposed here there is a max uh, cap for uh, equipment and manpower that you can't propose for more than 15 lakhs if it is the total is 50 lakhs means not more than 30% of the total amount which you are asking similarly for travel it could not cannot be more than 1.5 for ip it cannot be more than 1.5 so please you know uh, have a look at this table while you are proposing your budget and for each of these heads you need to have a good justification so if you are buying a particular equipment then that equipment will be used for which of the experiment and that experiment should be part of your work plan okay so there has to be a good correlation there and uh, there should be a good alignment between what you have proposed what you are asking in the budget same goes for the consumables the manpower with the right skill sets to complete that work plan go to market if you have proposed some travels to some hospitals all that travel uh, money uh, you can show your ip if you still want to file you have not filed then you can ask here so make sure you have a good justification for each of the budget heads very important is team who is proposing who is the project leader and do they have the right kind of team members with the right skill sets expertise experience so project leader so when you are uh, writing about the team for the online application there is a format given by the byrac so uh, download that and uh, include all the information for each of the team member in your team there will be a full time team and then there will be a part time team so they could be your advisors who are not full time with you try to include name affiliation academic background work experience expertise and their role in this project okay so some uh, someone might be a pi someone might be a co pi someone might uh, help with the business strategy someone might be a technical person okay so you should have people with complementary skill sets everyone cannot be with the same skill sets then uh, the aim of commercialization cannot be fulfilled also select your advisors who can help you in commercialization or initial testing so if i am developing a diagnostic i know that that has to be supported by key opinion leaders uh, say so i should have some endocrinologists some diabetologists as my advisors okay so a clinician if i am developing a, a device or a diagnostic product now yes the weightages so as i said highest weightage is for novelty and the t and then you will be evaluated that what is the technical feasibility of this idea whatever you are proposing is it really important 
going to create a big impact what is the commercialization strategy do you know the right path ahead who is proposing it are there some serious barriers with respect to scalability acceptability uh, even economic viability that something which you are making uh, is costing more than what it will get paid for or what would be its uh, selling price if that is the problem then also that's a barrier and what is the work plan so work plan is a very important section it has to be detailed out properly in a proper flow and sequence so make uh, please note that out of 100 if you score above 70 or above 80 that does not mean that your application gets selected even if you fail in any of these aspect any one of these aspects also then the proposal can fail okay so you have to make sure that you have uh, put in all the efforts to think about all these different aspects and then made your application stronger so before we conclude uh, some key takeaways that yes please be realistic use facts present facts add numbers instead of talking uh, in generalities be very specific crisp use the language which can be understood it cannot be so technical with all the technical jargons in the summary itself that you know it becomes very heavy for a person to read and understand what you are trying to say and make choose a format that is clear and easy to read know your funder read the guidelines carefully if required you talk to them there are contact details emails provided there if you have further questions reach out to them start with a brief summary so for each section it won't happen that you decide these two days i will sit and i will finish it doesn't happen that way you will have to keep on writing each part and then again revisit that and refine it again prepare a realistic budget which should be aligned with your work plan and your ask check all the figures correctly calculate them submit all the requested application material so other than the uh, proposal summary which is the main technical proposal there will be some other documents they will ask for individuals or from company so all those so make a checklist of all those okay once you log in on the portal you will get to see what all is required make a list and make sure you have all of them ready while you are finally uploading uh, the application and submitting it so take your time well written well thought well discussed proposals are having better chances of acceptance read the instructions carefully and also meet the deadline what happens is last last day as well as a day prior to that there will be lot of issues with the server sometimes it even crashes okay so don't wait till that last minute try to finish it two days earlier to that because if you are working on it for uh, two months and making your proposal really wonderfully but if you are not able to submit it because of some glitches then uh, you lose those six months right till the next call so finally never give up uh, very few people get it in their first attempt but why you should still go ahead and submit it is because it is going to be peer reviewed experts from the field are going to review it they are going to share their comments that what looks good what is not looking good how can you work on it and submit it again with what data so you can you know analyze that the comments can be analyzed and you can resubmit your application for next round with more data which was missing so never give up make it stronger and then apply again so that's all from my side and pallavi and shalini have shared their information they they are the first uh, point of contact for big and yes we are there on the social media also and we have just now announced a venture based camp where there are limited seats and it's an offline event where we actually sit with the applicants so first two days uh, first half there are sessions on each of these sections of application and then we sit with them and try to make sure that you know their application is almost 90% ready and third day they present it to us and that's the program venture base camp on grant writing which is already announced and is planned from 9th of may till 11th of may so those who are interested uh, you can write to us we can share or it's already there on our linkedin yeah so that's all from my side i'll stop sharing and we can take the questions 
Yeah, the floor is open for questions. Kindly uh, raise your hands. Are there any in the chat box? Maybe we'll pursue that. Yeah. Uh, have we answered all the questions? Most from of the them chat? I have answered. Uh, so I'll just tell you which ones uh, are left to be answered. So here, uh, what to be, what is to be exactly included in the summary? Yeah. Okay. So summary, see, uh, if, if this was my uh, example, I'll take the product which I was telling you we are trying to develop. Okay. So if it's a point of care diagnostic device for diabetes. So I will start with that, you know, we. So it's always, uh, it's never one person, it's team. So we are uh, developing a point of care device for detecting diabetes. The device uh, will have this much sensitivity, specificity, accuracy, will be able to detect it in say two minutes, three minutes, whatever. So it is estimated, but that is my target product profile. I have thought of it. Then currently we have say, uh, identified the biomarkers, the sensors, the design is ready and we plan to uh, make the first prototype, test uh, it mechanically uh, and for the performance and make some more units and get it clinically validated. So that is what I plan to do. It and uh, for we have we already have a patented technology or we plan to patent the sensor for this particular uh, uh, glucometer, then we have initially carried out the work which is published, whatever. So if it is already published, that is something you would like to tell or the team has a rich experience of doing this kind of work and wherever they have published. So uh, with BIG, we, might, we will be able to reach this TRL and uh, this will be ready for further uh, validation or uh, direct, you know, regulatory approval submission. So all this is something you should highlight in your summary. Yeah, thank you, Smita. So there's another thank question. You. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, they're trying to digitalize the way doctors communicate care, treatment, plan to patients. It's a SaaS-based uh, software platform. Do you feel it is eligible? Mm. So software as medical device uh, is also considered as a medical device. So uh, digitize the way doctors communicate care treatment plan to patients. Uh, yes, people with this kind of idea have applied before. Okay. Uh, also, there's one question from Abhijit, but I have not understood it. It says, how an audited financial statement can be submitted as mentioned in form for pre-revenue startup? I didn't really understand this question. So audited financial statement will be, uh, no, no. If you're pre-revenue, uh, you cannot. So you can just maybe on your letterhead uh, mention that we are still at a pre-revenue stage. Okay. okay. And upload that document. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, Ratinam has a question. Please go ahead. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, can you just uh, elaborate a bit more on this uh, royalty and license fee? Okay, royalty, uh, maybe which Bayrak is charging, right? Yeah, so I mentioned that it charges 5% of the revenue uh, based on your uh, you know, annual report, the balance sheet and all of that uh, until uh, you can return the amount that you have received from BIRAC. So it will be based on the BIG, the product or service that you have developed from your BIG project. It's 5% of your total uh, revenue. Okay. And a uh, similar question to the, uh, the this question. So we have a product uh, which uh, the patients use to register themselves, get into the diagnosis, all that. But it is not a diagnostic device, but it is a hospital-based device. Uh, is, is that eligible for that? Uh, it's similar to the SaaS-based thing, what we mentioned. It's not a diagnostics. It is only helping the clinics. So yeah, so it is helping. Uh, it's sort of device helping uh, the clinicians. Patients. Patients. Yes, you can apply. Okay. Basically for workflow, not really for diagnostics. Yeah, that is okay. We are having devices, drugs, diagnostic, agri, industrial, biotech. Five themes are there. Okay. 
So you would have to rightly choose the sub theme. Uh, I think uh, theme will be devices and sub theme you would have to choose rightly. Thank you. The next question, Deepak, would you want to go ahead? Uh, no, ma'am, actually, yeah, uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, this is Deepak Kumar from VAT University, Vello. Uh, I'm working as a research scholar in uh, uh, School of Biosciences and Technology. Uh, I have a question related to the, the startup uh, regarding the venture. Uh, like, uh, I'm working uh, in the enzymes related field in the biotechnology. So, I wanted to, uh, I have a plan to start uh, uh, a startup uh, with uh, with the enzymes, working with the enzymes uh, related to agriculture, like uh, use, useful uses of these enzymes uh, pertaining to the agriculture. So uh, is it possible to get a, a big grant uh, while I'm working in the, uh, while, while I'm doing my PhD or after PhD? So that's my question. So is your PhD project also same? Yeah, yeah, same ma'am, yeah. It's okay. related to enzymes with the, uh, the use, uh, yeah. applications which, with agriculture. Which year of PhD you are right now? Uh, right now I am in the first year, ma'am. Okay. Then I would suggest you don't apply because we okay. need a dedicated PI, someone who can spend full time on the project. Okay. So what would happen? Okay. You might have to do your PhD work also. Then they will ask yes. you to focus on this. Okay. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, but actually, my yeah. exact question is like, uh, if I have a, uh, uh, if I have a novel protocol uh, for designing the enzymes uh, pertaining to the agriculture, uh, so is it possible to get a grant uh, from the big? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is possible that uh, you are trying to develop a new process for some enzymes which should be useful. Yes, for yes. Yeah, it is possible. Yes. Okay, ma'am. So, ma'am, uh, one more question: Is there any attempts to apply for the online application, like? Is there any specific attempts or no, it's no, a unlimited? People have attempted four, five, fifth time also, and they have. Uh, there are few success stories who have got it in their fourth or fifth attempt also. Okay, fine. Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah. So one other question uh, is that if technologies uh, such as personalized medication for NGS based products, what if the technology is not patentable? Can they apply? Uh, if the technology is not patentable, uh, then in that case, you know, how do you protect your know-how is what they would like to know. Because it shouldn't be something which can be easily copied by someone else. And uh, while you are developing itself, suppose if someone else copies it and they are also into the market with the same thing in uh, another, say, two, three months after your market launch, then you would not be able to make that much revenue. So that's how, you know, if it is not patentable, then can you at least protect that know-how and in what form or how? Or how different it could be, which cannot be copied. That if you are able to describe that, that should also help. Okay. So uh, question from Sanjay, you, if you've already received a BIG grant uh, for food processing or robotic cooking range, uh, you cannot get the grant again because you get grant only once. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there is also a question on the team thing. Uh, do we need a doctor as one of the investigators in the proposal? So if you are developing a device or diagnostic, so finally, if your key opinion leaders or people with whom you need to test your product are going to be clinicians or doctors, then it is good to have them as part of your team it's okay if they are not full-time, uh, they can be just advisors to you. So they can actually help you refine your product or prototype, right? That what should be the ideal feature so that it can be used correctly for that particular application. That information they'll be able to help you with. And there are a series of questions as to, you know, what is the composition of the selection committee and a panel member? So basically this, these are these will be experts across India, um, and uh, there is no such number. I mean, uh, it's decided by Barak, so that will change. Uh, instead of ask, answering this question, which sectors are not eligible, I would ask you to go and check the guidelines on the Barak website and see what is eligible. That will probably help you to see if it fits. And the other question was that what are the statutory compliances required for an applicant company? 
to be able to answer that, Smita? Yeah, just uh, let me then ask uh, can you repeat the question? Just... What are the statutory compliances required for uh, an applicant? Statutory company? compliance required for an applicant company. Uh, so there will be some formats, right? You will need a shareholding pattern. Uh, 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 there is a format they have written which they want from the CA. So there are some formats from the company which they need. And then 51% uh, shareholding with an Indian uh, resident. All that is there. So with respect to that, there are already formats available on the site. Uh, once you log in, you will see that wherever they have asked a document, there would be a format which you need to download and some of that you might have to ask your CA to provide. Yeah. And the question to when do you have to start paying uh, the royalty is once you start the commercialization. That is the answer. Um, uh, Anne has a question. They have an embalming solution, which is unique. Which theme, sub-theme would it qualify? So if you can maybe uh, elaborate it more, like what do you mean by that? Maybe Anne, you can uh, unmute Hello, yourself. I'm yeah. here. Mm -hmm. I'm Dr. Anne from KMC Manipal. Uh, we have actually a solution. Embalming means we are preserving uh, human bodies. Uh, for uh, surgical skill training and for uh, anatomy for the undergraduate students of uh, medical uh, school. So we have a solution which is uh, particularly developed in a, a unique way, which is uh, not similar to what we use routinely. And we have even filed a patent for it recently. Uh, so we would want to know whether we uh, qualify for app applying uh, to BIG. Okay, and this embalming solution can be used uh, across by all the hospitals as a product, right? Uh, it can be, uh, the uh, end customers can be medical colleges mm -hmm. where they would uh, have a skill lab where they have utilized uh, cadavers for surgical training as well as for teaching. So those will be the, uh, the end customers. Um, and uh, also, uh, uh, the going through the big proposal, I, I came across that we have to be incubated in one of the incubators for applying to the big grant. Is it is it so? No, no. Not at the time of application. You can take a LOI from us, letter of intent, where we will say that if you get selected, uh, then uh, we will help you with incubation or whatever services required to further develop your technology. Okay, okay. Uh, so I just want to know whether we qualify to apply with this particular product offers. Yeah, your product idea is a little different, but uh, uh, if it is resulting into a product which has a market, uh, you can apply. But uh, I feel maybe uh, we can take it separately. We also need to uh, check that if this kind of okay. product, you know, in which category exactly it will fit into. Okay. So yeah. how can I how can I get you in can touch? just write to us? I think Sharini has posted uh, her uh, email address here. Okay. Okay. Email address is yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Thank sure. you. Thank you so much. Okay. I think Ramesh uh, uh, Babu has a question. Please go ahead. Um. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> there are many devices available in foreign countries, manufactured in foreign countries, but there are no manufacturers in India. Uh, such kind of devices, if we um, develop here in India, uh, uh, what will be the issues when we file for patent? And then one more question I have, who are the competitors? Could you please explain a bit? Okay. So uh, if you're trying to make something indigenously in India, where we are de uh, import dependent, then uh, uh, what they will look for is... I are you just trying to copy the same product and doing it in the same way? Even if you are doing that, is there a cost advantage or there are some value added features which you are adding to it? Okay. So all that you need to build in your application. Uh, and then um, what was your second question? If you can please repeat. Who are the competitors? Uh, competitors will be yes, people who are into the market with the same kind of product. Even if they are not... Uh, in India, even the country of origin is different. They are your competitors. Suppose if we make similar kind of devices, when we go for a patent, will there be any issues? Uh, so there, 
if you are making it in a different way okay there is a different technology you are using to make it then you might be able to patent it okay yeah and if they have already filed a patent and if you are trying to use the same method then it might not be okay but uh, will um, byra grant will support that they might support if you are able to differentiate it clearly that you know what is the impact what is the need okay if uh, you know you are able to help them with the numbers right like at what cost right now we are buying it how many people need it in india and if all of them stop importing and they are able to get it here and where it is going to be used so because of that you know subsequently maybe the product which they are making with this machine that okay. cost also comes down so what okay. will be the total economic impact if you are able to explain properly okay and the advantage the cost advantage as well as the features advantage uh, the job opportunities which you are going to create uh, okay. with this kind of uh, production unit all that is something you would need really need to explain well and make it convincing oh okay thank you yeah deepak do you have any other question ma'am can i come in yes yes ah uh, uh, ma'am actually i want to know that if the product is not available at all in market it is the very much novel uh, there is no competition so then how to find out that uh, to show that market uh, uh, this thing marketability of this uh, so if it is something no one has actually developed earlier but for that same application people might be using something right uh, no not using it can be we have checked in our lab and it is possible and our things we 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 have already tested this thing at the in the very preliminary level and it is possible to use okay so how to do that is how we can prove because it will be usable we have the law this is usable but uh, right now people might be using something right or something which is already existing Uh, other other form in the other form they are using yes ha, so if the other form they are using it for the same application yeah then you can compare that way that whatever they are using right now okay so with respect to the parameters you have identified so that will be the our market competitor like mean that means from there yes, the yes. marketability we can we can say the market it's the yes, marketable product yes. you can look at the purpose is the same that product yeah Uh, purpose is same uh, actually, mm -hmm. so they, they are, that is a different product they are using. We are proposing different one, uh, but it is the more useful advantages are there for that one patent already we have filed actually, and two more are in the way actually. So we can yes, go so for can, this. Yeah, you can compare it that way with whatever product is currently being used. Okay, so in that way can so it will be the individual to go or it will so through the company to go. Which one will be better? So, uh, have you already uh, uh, incorporated a company? That I, we have done for the some other product actually. Ah, so yeah. as a company only you have to. Yeah, yeah, company. We have one company, but we have not started actually for the other purposes. We have incorporated the company. That is a different product. But that's fine if you already have a private company. That doesn't Company, yeah, apply as a company. Okay, through the company to apply. Yes, yes. Will be better. Okay. Thank yeah, because what will happen if right now you apply as an individual, and yeah. if you get the BIG grant, they will ask you to uh, incorporate a company. Okay, so, so with the same company, you, can you have two entities. So if you have a company, then that company. Yeah, yeah. Com company we have incorporated now recently, and then we can go ahead for that. So that company should be the applicant. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, we. Oh, uh, ma'am, I. Yeah, Deepak, you want yes, to speak? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I uh, I have one more. I have one more question. Uh, from uh, so how long it will take to start up a venture like from application to uh the starting a company? So duration. I'm asking about the duration. No, no. Uh, so how long it will take? Two are not at all related. Even if you have an idea. Okay. Means see, incorporating a company is a different thing. Yeah. So you can have a company and then start scouting for ideas and uh, you license out some technologies and work on that. That's also possible. Okay. So right now, suppose in, in your case you are still a student and you are at an idea yes, stage. So I would suggest yes. you wait for till you get some grant. 
and okay. then only incorporate a company. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, I have a, if I have a specific product, uh, so how to showcase that product to the uh, B A G to get the grant up grants from the venture uh, from the organization? You uh, see, B I G is a project. Okay, so you have okay. to scope that project. If you already okay. have a product which can now re, uh, you know enter the market, then that's a late stage. So that okay. product you need to then talk to maybe venture center if you want to connect to some investors or get the seed fund. But then that okay. has to be as a company. As a company, uh, the investors will not uh, entertain individuals. Okay. Then you need to have a company in place. But that's okay, not part of BIG. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, Veena, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, so if we are a faculty here in Manipal and uh, you want a person fully dedicated, full-time dedication uh, for this project, then can we, uh, you know, employ a junior uh, uh, research person who will be dedicated full-time and we be the PI? Yes, possible. Okay, yes, thank you. Yes, possible, yeah. I think people have asked for LOI link. Let us show that. I think someone has asked for resharing the contact details, but I think Shalini has already shared, right? Yeah, I'll just put up the slide again once so that uh, huh. you know, people can take a picture. And the BBC information they need. So maybe I'll share that. It's visible, right? Yes, yes. Okay. I'll stop share. You want to answer the questions in the chat box? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to help them with the... So uh, for all who want to have this recording, we are going to post the YouTube link on the BRBC YouTube channel of Venture Center. You can take it from there. Uh, allow us a day or so to do that. I'll just look at some questions in the chat box. Uh, so this is the link which I am posting. That's for uh, the venture base camp. From 9th to 11th. Yeah, that yeah. Right. yeah. So is it compulsory to have a GST registered company? To no, no, no. You can apply as individuals also, right? So you don't need to be GST registered. And... Um, no, you don't have to register a company uh, before applying for BIG grant. So you can apply as an individual and then form a company only when you get the grant. That yeah. is the advice. Uh, request yeah. to help me. No, no, no. So if, if somebody wants to, you know, understand, um, you know, if their product or idea is more novel than what is available in the uh, market, or if it's better than the gold standard or, you know, you can actually do a patentability assessment. We have an IP department here at Venture Center, or you can also do a, your own research where you can uh, check what is the patent landscape and whether you have a freedom to operate. So if you want, um, we can also share the details uh, of our IP team here. So you can get in touch with them and, you know, understand the process of doing patentability assessment. Just a minute, I'll share the details. Yeah, till then, I think Shweta, uh, Shweta Chawla has asked a question that for individual application, can an applicant be PI and no other team members apart advisors? So, uh, you can do that. 
but still i would advise if you can at least have one more team member if you don't have right now what you can say that to be hired and you can talk about the profile uh, of that person that whether you will hire a uh, say msc in microbiology person because there are some microbiology studies which you need to do or you will hire a btech person because you know you need to make a prototype where engineering knowledge is required so at least one or two people and what will be their profiles whom you will onboard once you get the grant so at least try to have uh, that described in your team uh, information or slide So, Agni Card has asked: We develop a bio fertilizer from farm waste. Can we apply? Yes, you can apply. I'm just going to put up links for uh, mentoring sessions. You can sign up for mentoring sessions. I've put up the link for LOI. Also, I put up a link. You can apply for LOI with Venture Center. And uh, please provide your feedback. I'll share the feedback link. Ma'am, uh, I, I have one more question uh, related to novelty, ma'am. Okay. Uh, you have you told about uh, novelty. It should be twenty percent, right? No, that's uh, not like, the case. Uh, that is the evaluation uh, criteria. Okay, ma'am. So, how to check that uh, evaluation based on evaluation criteria? How to check uh, whether my novelty uh, it fits a uh, twenty uh, percent contribution or something. So, can you relate to that? Uh... No, 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 not twenty percent. See, weightage of the application marks that is. So, if it's okay. a hundred marks application, twenty marks they have assigned or twenty percent of it for novelty. Okay. And in your application, when you are writing the novelty section, uh, if you are not clear, how should I describe it? Talk to any patent okay. attorney firm. We also have like uh, she has already provided the details of uh, our colleague Archana Joshi. You can write to her. You can yes, uh, request her for an online meeting where she will try to understand what you are working on, your technology, and then help you know whether you can patent it or how can you further do the prior art search uh, uh, report and FTU and all that. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think um, Sanjay has a question. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. So yeah. this was around patency only. I think while I understand, uh, you know, there's a table and there are marks given to everything. But at the same time, I think we have to score in each. You may score in all and not in one. You can still default. Yeah. And that's what I heard. Yes. Yeah. So because we had applied uh, last time also. And I think we did, I mean, like, as for the report, we did pretty good. But in no novelty, we were not scoring. But there was not much clarity, you know, what do you consider under novelty? Because, uh, you know, it's still like, I mean, okay, we have applied for IPR. Now, is it because you applied for IPR, IPR has not come through, you scored less? Because uh, like that, there will be many who would have a great product, but IPR is still under process. So actually, I wanted to know, novelty is, uh, you know, comprises of these five things. And this is how this twenty percent is assigned to novelty. That is that is what is my question. Yes. Very specific, standardized. That so this is what we will follow rather than keeping it subjective. Is what is my question? So sometimes, see, even people who have not yet applied for any patent, but they have been able to describe the novel features and support it with the right references, with maybe a prior art search report or what is already patented in that particular area. They have also made it and they have been able to convince. And then there are cases where you have applied, but it is not yet granted. That's fine. So how you describe the novel features and also you support it with the competitive landscape, differentiate it. Okay. And okay. Together they will, you know, evaluate your novelty based on the differentiation and whatever you're seeing is uh, patentable based on that. Yeah, I got you. Um, see, I'm, uh, I worked in this industry for more than 25 years. So with, not to exaggerate to tell you that this is the experience, but just to tell you that I still find it a little subjective. Mm -hmm. So my request is that the way the table has been made, I'm not questioning it. Uh, you know, I'm sure you've done due diligence. 
But the only point I'm trying to make is that while we make table and divide it into six sections and assign a percentage, if there could be sub-segmentation also done so hmm. that it becomes absolutely clear and not stays subjective because then it's very difficult to get into a discussion that you have novelty, but I believe novelty because I have applied. It hmm. takes time, I have no control. But the product and the idea that I'm talking about is in MVP stage. I have tried, tested, I have 50 tractions. I have a, a feedback from the customers. I might not have revenue. So, you know, the and the market size is X, which is a furnished data. The problem size, the need, everything will be there. The only point I'm making here is uh, that if someone has to score over other person, let there be a little more transparency in the sense that if I have divided this 100% into five, six buckets, these buckets are further subdivided, wherein the further breakup is given. I think that will be um, that will be nice for everyone. That's all I can say because yeah. we applied last time and I still couldn't understand uh, why our product I, is going I get nowhere. your point. Yeah, I get your point. Yeah, you're right. But then uh, this uh, weightages and the marking system, all this is defined by BIRAC. We are just a partner there. Uh, but to answer your question, now that if you wish to apply again with the same uh, idea and uh, you will have to address the comments from your earlier application. So if they have uh, said that it is not novel, that's why not supported, then whatever you said right now, that you already have attraction, Okay, and uh, what are those value added features, not only about patent and you know how people are finding it useful, all that yeah. is something you can address in your uh, response to that question or that comment of no novelty. Can Archana Joshi help us on this if we can yes, contact her? She can. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my only request is, I mean, just not taking too much time, there's so many people out there. I think, um, uh, you know, whenever we assign a table and give percentage, because I have been whole of my life handling government uh, in my ex-organization at me. This was always an issue L1, T1. L1 to ho jate the. T1 kabhi bada mushkil subjective hota hai. So that is why we would always request that if you divide it into 6 segments, 16 segments, doesn't matter. But against that, each segment put something which is very clear. That 1, 2, 3, 4. Tick or not tick. Like let's say 20%. If it has 5 sub-segments, each I'll give 4. Now I qualify with let's say in three out of four. So I score, uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, there are five sub-segments in 20, which means four into five. So I score in four, I don't score in fifth. So I get 16. It's absolutely transparent. So I'm just saying that if, can, if it can go as a feedback back to the big, because it's a big, good, respected fund, um, it will work better for the startup because we all are putting a lot of effort. All of us are putting a lot of effort and showing a lot of guts to do something for the community. Uh, we don't know what will happen to us. That's a stage two. But we are all into this to see that, you know, kuch hum kare desh ke liye. suppose we are into mental health. I see it's a $30 billion market out there. And now we have been there for the last three years on this. Uh, and trying to do something on the voice base, which is novel, which is not happening in this country. Though there are examples outside India where people have already got $200 million plus grant. Uh, you know, at a stage where we are already... We are still struggling for 10 lakh, 20 lakh, and those guys are at 200 million dollars. So, yeah, problem yeah. I'm here. getting your point. Uh, see, what we can do is we can convey this to Bayrak yeah, as the partners, but you yeah. can also, as an individual or earlier uh, applicant, uh, can just write to them a friendly email that you know, uh, if the evaluation can be more transparent or if we can get more information about the application, uh, <laughs> uh, more think, details, where did yeah. we score less? Yeah, just to close it, I think we will apply. We are applying this time and we are making sure that any points that were raised last time, we cover them up and present it in a much better fashion rather than, I think, seeking clarification and wasting their time. We would apply yeah. again. And thanks for the clarification, ma'am. Sure. Okay. So can we have a quick picture if everybody can on their cameras? I'll just take a quick picture.
Yeah, ICT nice also if you can uh, on your pic camera. Yeah, just a second. Just one more I will take. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for being there. And, you know, uh, I want to thank the partners also. We had a good uh, audience. We had 100 uh, people attending the talk today. So VIT, Vellore, SSN, uh, Tamil Nadu, ICT, ICT NICE, um, Ahmedabad University, Venture Studio, uh, Anna University, Sudha, and um, Manipal GOK, Bionest, we really thank you for publicizing this event and, you know, out giving good outreach. Um, we also have a talk coming up next week. So if if anybody has missed or have any questions, I mean, they are free to join. We'll be circulating the registration link for that. And yes, LVP, yes, um, uh, LV Prasad I uh, incubator as well. We thank you a lot for publicizing. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, um, thank yeah. you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Smita. Yeah, thank you.